Hi, this is Paul with a tutorial on Octane Render for Modo. This particular tutorial is going through the changes that I've um, been working on for the last couple of months and they also wrap up the Octane 3.06 API. Um, the, uh, the actual release number of the plugin will be 117 there, so it'll be 3.6.2.117. Um, it'll probably actually be a slightly later version of Octane, so that 2 might be a 3, but uh, don't worry about that. Uh, heaps to get through. First one is Octane 3.06 introduces adaptive sampling. So I've got a simple scene here rendering in Octane. If you go into the kernel settings now, there is an active sampling area and uh, you can do your own research on specifically how these work but you can turn on it on adaptive sampling and the render is then only working on the areas which uh, have a noise amount greater than that noise threshold so if we go into we can enable the noise pass which is here and then we can see the noise that's currently in the render. So after a certain amount of time, it uh, the, with adaptive sampling on, it will stop rendering um, an area. So we'll change that to just 50 samples. So after 50 samples, which this is now, um, it will convert, and it'll finish that when it when it refreshes. Um, it will. Uh, the areas that it has stopped rendering in will be green and the other areas are the noisy areas which are receiving all the attention. So if you want it to stop rendering at a noisier level, change the noise threshold from 0 0.02 to say 0 0.05. Um, and there's some other controls here which I won't cover today. But you can see that it's um, very cleanly um, or very very quickly denoising this render here. So people have been reporting some fantastic results with this. Okay, the next new thing with this release is all the defaults have changed. So when you start a new scene, I'll just add a cube. When you start an, a new scene, the uh, the environment has changed from uh, the daylight to texture environment and the imager has changed to a linear uh, workflow. So the imager uh, response is set to linear, the gamma is set to 2.2, the vignetting is zero. Um, so what this means is when you start rendering um, a new scene, it should be aligned as closely as possible to Modo. Um, so if we start rendering in Octane. So the only difference there is the background colour. If you change that to constant, you'll see that it matches. I'll just turn off that directional light. You'll see that there's an exact match there. Um, now the other neat thing is that uh, we can add a constant to the environment material to control the background colour. So if we add a constant and make it say red, you'll see that both Octane and Modo are very very closely aligned there. Similarly you can just change the zenith colour and again that'll be um, picked up immediately. So that means when people f first start using the plugin it's going to match really closely straight away. You just need to remember to turn this directional light off here. You can still go back to um, daylight if you want. Um, that's still an option for you. The other change is uh, the uh, color mapping. So I've got a simple scene here. 
So this scene has got a UV map and previously the plugin required that you were using uh, linear color mapping in Modo in order to get an exact match but that's no longer the case. So uh, when we start rendering if we have a look at the color mapping here so at the moment um, it's using uh, sRGB for 8 and 16 uh, bit PNGs and JPEGs so if you change that to linear you'll see that they both change and you can change them back again um, so you don't need to worry about uh, the uh, OCIO settings in Modo anymore they get picked up Uh, the next point is lighting. There's been some pretty big changes in lights. So I've got a simple scene here which has an area light, um, a photometric light, and a point light. And you can see those rendering in Modo there. So Octane will now, uh, previously you needed to tick the Create Octane Emitter and then do some tweaking but you don't need to do that anymore for point lights, area lights and photometric lights. So you, you can see that none of these lights have an octane emitter. Um, when we start rendering, though the, the uh, geometry to emit these, uh, this lighting is created on the fly by the plugin. So you can see this point light here, we can turn it off and back on again and it updates live we can change the color and that also updates if it's live and we can change the intensity and uh, that's the same similarly for the area light um, any changes there um, get updated live uh, if we actually move it oh, it's not giving me the widget there but yeah if you move the area light say to minus three you'll see that it's moving in both the Modo and the Octane render there. So they, they match up really, really nicely. Uh, with photometric lights, uh, the match is pretty close. So if I turn off those two, this is the photometric light. Um, it's pretty close. Um, thanks very much to Funk who worked out all the maths and calculations behind this. Um, but uh, you should find the majority of um, IES files will render correctly uh, well will render in the same fashion in Octane as they do in Modo. Okay moving on to the final item which is absorption distance. This is a render that's being run in Modo at the moment and you can see that it uses the absorption distance here to absorb a transparency, a transparent color. Um, and previously, if you wanted to render this same effect in Octane, you would have needed to add, a, add a, an Octane override and manually set this up. But you can see there's no base material there. If there's no Octane override there, if we now open the viewport, the plugin will convert this on the fly. So even if you change the absorption distance, Oops, that's a little bit big. You'll see that Octane is reasonably closely matching Modo there. It's not an exact match, but it's, it's close. If you change to 400 millimeters, they both update. If you change the color, again, they update. To actually see how this is running in Octane, we can add an Octane override. And then when you edit that, you can see that the can see that it's a specular material with uh, an absorption, an inverted abs absorption in the medium. That density is calculated from the uh, absorption distance in Modo. There's a color correction and then there's the transparency color. So that converts for you and you can, you can then change that if needed to give it a custom look and feel. Okay, that's it. The new release will hopefully be final 
in the once the final version of Octane 3.06 is released. Thanks for watching.